you see the essence of uh, i or that which is unchanging the invisible the dark background the space like background of consciousness is the self it is easy is easy to know the mind likes it actually oh finally i am not this pile of junk you see body i am not this a pile of thoughts in the mind or the person a pile of memories i am not all that freedom finally i am pure nothingness shivoham but next day the guru is going to break it <laughs> because it, it is being understood from the mind you see the mind stops here also it is not a small thing i am not saying that let us not underestimate the importance of self realization it is but it is only the first step there are only two steps on the path of non duality this is the first step the second step is look that which appears is also the same thing that which witnesses the appearance the witness is appearance and the appearance is witness the consciousness of experience is equal to the experience is there anything to the experience except consciousness of experience take any experience you want the exodi experience the samadhi experience the daily experience well it is all consciousness of experience consciousness of experience is consciousness there is no separate thing as consciousness which resides somewhere you know underground in another dimension and then the experience appears in front of it and it gets and grasps the experience as takes hold of it and calls it oh my experience no it is your fantasy it is your delusion it is your ignorance to think like this why why this thought appeared it is activity of the mind <laughs> our mind is you know trying to get in get you uh, uh, use its logical faculties its intelligence to imagine a mechanism of the experience and the experiencer no there is no mechanism believe me or not if there were like this if there were duality we would have found it long ago in this appearance that you call this planet earth immensely intelligent people appeared and disappeared immensely intelligent very powerful they could not find it <laughs> they could not find the duality they could not find the mechanism through which the experience appears and the experiencer gets it no two they say no two i cannot find the one also but i cannot find the two also i am talking about giants the spiritual giants nobody could find it now but i am not discouraging you who knows who may you may find it you know and you are you will that get the you will then get the nobel prize of spiritual spirituality but it is very simple it is very simple to see the there is no difference between the experience and the experiencer what has happened is that your notion your idea that the experiencer must be nothingness the experiencer must be something exotic para dimensional para human non material thing <laughs> the emptiness must be some pure emptiness of the divine kind this this is your expectation and that is that that is the only thing that went wrong otherwise it's all whatever you know it's in front of you the oneness is right here right now in front of you you don't, don't need to go anywhere you don't even need the guidance it is your experience right now the oneness is your experience right now if you remove all these delusions all this you know imaginary thoughts from your mind if you remove the words remove the atman throw away the brahman is nothing like this these are only words throw them away look at what is happening look at your direct experience the approach anubhuti it is experiencing and that's all it is a conscious experiencing there is nothing else nothing else that which appears also appears in that which witnesses it nothing appears nothing is witnessed so oneness is our experience right now throw away these concepts throw away the atman it's not there throw away the brahman it's not there they are not two individual things which have separated and then you must twist your body and do the nali kriya dhati kriya and you know be as like that to unite <laughs> these two no they are already one they are already united throw away the thoughts that tell you that they are two look just look see that is why it is called seeing and that is why those who know oneness are called seers and that is why the whole knowledge is called darshan darshan means to see in sanskrit 
So philosophy is not darshan, you see. Darshan is not philosophy. Darshan is that which is right here, right now. Philosophy is cooked up something by the mind. I don't know whether there is any proper English word for the darshan, but in India we have different meanings. Um, in Sanskrit at least, not in India. <laughs> the India is now different thing. Uh, this uh, subcontinent which was there, uh, where this knowledge evolved, and it distinguished between darshan and the philosophy. The philosophy is called vad, v double a d. So this vad, that that vad, you see. So the vad means talk. It comes from the vad, which means to talk. <laughs> and yes, it is just talk. Philosophy is just talk. Hot air coming from the mouth. I don't know if there is something like this in Western um, cultures, but. Uh, here the distinction is very very clear that which people talk about is philosophy that which is seen is darshan do not give it the name of reality truth oh darshan is true no 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 just like i said nothing is true here nothing is false it is that which is seen seen darshan that the one who sees it is, is darshanik is the seer so who can become a seer well everybody is is, is a seer right now <laughs> remove the vad remove the philosophy from it you become the seer now now there is no need to talk about it you see the wise men do not talk those who don't know they keep talking like i'm talking <laughs> you see you need to talk sometimes just to tell others do not talk so silence is the greatest teaching you know you know the meaning of it now you understand the meaning of this great teaching you know silence is the great te greatest tre teaching and why do they say that because just see you will know <laughs> talk probably you won't know you'll never know <laughs> by talks see there is oneness right now right here the consciousness of the experience is both consciousness and experience experiencing is both experience and the experiencer the brahman is both atman and brahman and the atman is both brahman and atman it is also the maya it is also the appearance and now for the purpose of studying and for the purpose of philosophy you can divide it go on dividing it and go on giving it names and forms and whatever now anil is saying um, yeah welcome anil and he is asking does the darshan an eternal concept beyond life and death uh, well darshan is not a concept just like i said darshan is pure seeing whatever you are seeing right now and the life and death is concepts <laughs> life and death they are concept in the mind you see because uh, something appears in which we see in the drishya and then the mind comes in mind also appears you see it comes in starts dividing it into different forms names and uh, uh, different entities and they are all concepts so it sees birth it sees death by the way life and death you cannot put them together you can put birth and death together so you can say concept beyond birth and death because life is eternal life goes on you can say life is that which is happening life is that which is being seen the pure consciousness is nothing but life so but life is you see everything is living everything is eternal there is no, nothing else here except life all that appears is a living appearance and therefore people say that uh, consciousness is eternal i never die <laughs> well the i you have slapped the eye on the consciousness on the atman and therefore you are very truly very correctly entitled to say that i don't die this appearances they they appear and disappear the birth and death they happen the seeing that which is seeing never disappears never dies so yes yes seeing is beyond life death birth appearance disappearance you can say like this and if this statement comes out of the seeing itself then it is a useful statement otherwise i don't see any use of it so no darshan is not a concept life and death are concepts birth and death are concepts birth and death they come and go they appear disappear that which is seeing that which is witnessing the birth and deaths and that which appears in form of the born and the dead both are same that they are the seeing they are the darshan anyhow this is my interpretation and
there will be somebody else who will you know write another book into um, in uh, on this topic of darshan so most welcome you are most welcome to explore you see explore what the great minds say so i think anil has more questions and uh, we'll put the issue of the guides on hold a little bit because that was just a warm up exercise he is asking now what's the difference between brahman and ishwar is ishwar some sort of mega mind of prakriti as so many words so yeah we are most welcome explore explore the um, other philosophies also other darshans also because nowadays we have uh, we are mixing too much we have become very liberal in mixing the words darshan is philosophy in hindi <laughs> so, it's all is their wish who can stop people but uh, please keep in mind loosely talking we call philosophies as, as darshan because some because philosophy is what it is an attempt to get to the uh, that which is seeing there is no no other use of philosophy even though we surely know that simply the vaad the talking the ism is not going to bring the seeing so what is the difference between brahman and so many words you see uh, brahman falls in the domain of uh, advait vedant ishwar comes from the sankhya and prakriti also comes from the sankhya the purush and prakriti the ishwar also comes from the yog darshan <laughs> if you want to call it yog darshan later on some people the mixed all of them some of the buddhism and some of uh, sankhya into the modern advait which is not modern which is as old as shankaracharya you know 2000 years probably 1000 years 1500 years and there were some really genius people like uh, avdhut and um, ashtavakra they you know they brought back the nirgun brahm cut down all the mess that happened in the advait philosophy so i always mix all these dates and people so never mind um, these if you mix uh, different words from different philosophies you will be confused so then you will start asking what is the difference between this word which was in this philosophy and that word which was in the other philosophy the uh, as as far as i know although i am not a pandit i do not i do not interpret the uh, the spiritual text you know it's not my expertise uh, what i see i tell you uh, what i see is that you know the ishwar was imported from sankhya philosophy into the vedanta there is no ishwar in advait vedant it is non theistic philosophy you don't need to worship anything because the ishwar then became an object of worship in this subcontinent you see now people translate the ishwar as god which is not correct so let me tell you what these words mean according to my own understanding who knows you know i probably am wrong but let me put uh, submit to you what i think are these the brahman is you know appears from the ved and uh, it is the existence it is all that is it comes from the word brih which means the big like brihad or brihaspati and so brahm and uh, it is all that is the existence itself and then it goes on to say that which i think is i am is all that is that is the whole essence you see that is the one mahavakya ham brahmasmi and that ends the philosophy or the darshan ends there with this scene now there were very practical people you highly intelligent people they said it does not work for me yes probably it is one yes okay but does not work what works for me is when i divide the one into two and the sankhya did that they divided the one into two and the purush and prakriti became now ishwar is a concept which is a form the manifested prakriti is called ishwar yes he said is some sort sort of mega mind of prakriti manifested existence is ishwar and as you know there is nothing more in the manifestation except that which is created by the mind so yes it is the nature of the manifestation you can say not of the existence not of the existence the existence is nirgun it has no nature it is also sagun all nature happens in the existence in the brahman so the manifested that which appears is mind its nature is mental its nature is that of mind 
that is Ishwar. And because it is a mind collection of memories, collection of information, this is an information processing system. So all that gets organized here survives. And whatever could get organized, whatever information could get organized because of the natural tendency of the self-organizing systems to organize themselves. You see, whenever there is change, there is uh, information and it tends to organize. This is the fundamental rule of manifestation. It tends to organize and all that could be organized and it is very big. It is infinite, you know, almost infinite and it's growing. So just a sea of memories, sea of metaphysical patterns, changing patterns. Sometimes I call it the universal mind because it is easy to understand. Individual mind, universal mind. Individual mind is a happening in the universal mind. So the Jeev is a happening in the Ishwar. Jeev is a part of the Ishwar, a child of the Ishwar. And when people realized this, they started seeing Ishwar as a means of fulfillment of their desires because something so big and obviously it can fulfill your desires. So um, the Jeev has nothing else. There is no other goal uh, for the Jeev except fulfillment of desires or attainment of happiness and freedom. That's what the Jeev wants. That is the part of the Ishwar. It, it wants it. And obviously it is fulfilling the desires. Obviously there is no separate Jeev from the Ishwar. So it uh, then became theistic. People started worshipping it in various forms and uh, started uh, thinking in terms of the avatars that the Ishwar can take, that this universal mind can appear in. And it, yes, it can appear in any, any form, you see. It is immensely powerful and it is it has no limits at all. Uh, probably that, you know, answers this question. Uh, do not mix between philosophies or the different darshans. It will cause confusion. So that's why, you know, when I wrote or when I recorded or talked about it, I just, you know, kicked out all the old wo words, all the Sanskrit words, and I, you know, adopted the modern words, which like the universal mind or the individual mind and uh, made it very, very clear. They are the same, you see, <laughs> they are the same. The water in the jar is same as the water in the pond. Just dip the jar in the pond. Where is the difference? You see, the jar breaks and it's all one universal mind. It is a dream of the universal mind to think that I am an individual <laughs> and, and that I have a life. It is a dream. So we are a dream of the Ishwar. It is a state of the mind of the Ishwar, this whole world, whatever has appeared. And then we do loosely say that the Ishwar created all these things. Just like I create my dream in the, this individual mind creates a dream in the sleeping state. The Ishwar is sleeping, dreaming the world. And that's why the form of the Vishnu is always sleeping. <laughs> he is sleeping on a giant snake, five-headed snake. The snake is called Shesh. Shesh means remaining. Remaining what? You know, remaining energy. Remaining energy of the manifestation. It is behind the manifestation. It is behind the Vishnu who is also called as an um, avatar of Ishwar equal to Ishwar. So different people, they gave different words and you know, even anthropomorphized, gave them uh, hands and feet and stuff, made stories. Nowadays, we just sing songs and enjoy the songs immensely, very nice songs. But um, yes, it all these sim symbology has very deep meaning. People saw it, people imagined it, people tried to represent it. And then the corruption happened, turned all into mindless worship religions of all kinds. There are many, you can see. <laughs> Hardly anybody knows what they are worshipping, isn't it? <laughs> that is, you know, as a spiritual seeker, we are all freed from this ignorance. As soon as you, you know the essence, you know all that is happening here. All the madness, you can see it. Uh, uncorrupted, the pure form, pure knowledge is here. All you need to do is, you know, ask your guru, Sir, what is the meaning of the snake? Why is sleeping on the snake? What is Lakshmi doing there, you see? What is Brahma doing there on lotus? And you see, it all can be explained. You don't need to worship it. Only the people who don't want to know, they use blind faith. Those who want to know, it is all here. The knowledge is all here. So uh, it is also called, the, the snake is a representation of the energy somehow, probably. 
they found it very good representation and it's also called kundalini nowadays in the tantric uh, what you call philosophies in the tantric sects and the same shesh will be called as kundalini so evolutionary energy yes it is creating it is doing its evolution how can i awaken the kundalini you cannot <laughs> you are a manifestation of kundalini you cannot awaken it it is you can accelerate it because you are the ishwar you are it so just you know follow simple rules evolve in the direction where it is already going and your experiences will be speeded up now we are deep into the illusion isn't it we are deep into the maya a person who is on the path of knowledge is not very concerned about these things because knows everything those who don't know they are doing the attempts they are doing the hard work they are doing the prayatna gani does not do hard work <laughs> only only the agani is doing it so it's probably good it's okay some day they will awaken to this fact that it cannot be achieved by hard work